Today I fold time and space, so to speak, in order to bring you clarity, that the Sumerian gods and their ways are indeed now biblical. This is in regards to the Assyrian Anunnaki god, Ashur, who, in Assyrian times, was labelled as the Framer of the Earth, which aligns almost perfectly with the hymn to the ancient church, which has the same title as Ashur, the Framer of the Earth and Sky. As you will see, this is undeniable. In fact, to finish, I will leave you with the biblical hymn, adorned with the Sumerian components. For example, the earth and sky are the An and Ki, Anshar and Kishar. As you can see, it is the language that creates this wormhole. We begin with the Assyrian ritual the game of thrones. In the event of a threat or a bad omen, the kings of Assyria had a ritual. The ruler would go into hiding, disguised as a farmer, possibly a shepherd, and a substitute was chosen to replace him. Ashur, Marduk, the god of agriculture, this might have been a particularly loyal subject, a political rival, or a fool. I think we found what you were looking for. It's worth noting that the name Jacob means substitute. The substitute would then take a queen and sit on the throne for up to 100 days. Then, when the threat had passed, the false king was killed and given a royal burial. Think about all the treasure that went with him, and each king did this three times. Fate had been tricked. The paranoid Ashar Haddon is thought to have performed this ritual at least three times. I wonder if this relates to Merodach, Marduk, and Ashur, together meaning death and slaughter, the bitter oppression of the wolf curse, which is the wish and desire of the gods. I believe this is also evident in the Battle of Abraham versus the three kings of Babylon. Because during this time, Babylon had three kings, who were all assassinated in succession. But the real king did not die. Therefore, possibly the illusion that the king of Babylon was defeated. It would appear that history does indeed repeat, 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 After Zuanna's cherub destroyed Babylon, sorry, sorry, after Sennacherib's destruction of Babylon in 689 BC, the Assyrian scribes fashioned a new version of the Enuma Elish that exalted Ashur instead of Marduk. I wonder what makes people believe that this transfer ended here. It does not end here. Now I'll run through the meanings and purpose of the winged sun, in contrast to the hymn to the ancient church. The Assyrian feather-robed archer figure superimposed over a winged sun symbol. The source I use is the Myths of Babylonia and Assyria 
by Donald A. Mackenzie. Ashur was not a goat of heaven, but a bull of heaven, like the Sumerian Nana, Sen, Suen, Lord, Zu, the moon god of Ur, the wolf curse. Alternatively, Nenep of Saturn, and of course, Bel Enlil. Don't forget the Anzu bird became Imdu Good, the Bull of Heaven. As the Bull, however, Ashur was like Anshar, the ruling animal of the heavens. And like Anshar, he had associated with him six divinities of council, which would align with the name of Marduk, Lugal Uka. Other deities who were similarly exalted as high heads at various centers and various time periods. The hymn to the ancient church. Those included with the exalted gods were Anu, Bel Enlil, with Ea, Merodach, Nergal, and Shamash. A symbol of the first three was a turban on a seat, which may have represented the world mountain, and therefore also the mound and temple. Ea Enki as the world spine, was a symbol as a column with a ram's head, standing on a throne beside which crouched a goat fish, the Uz Abkalu. Merodach's column terminated in a lance head, and the head of a lion crowned that of Nergal. Actually, the lion would be the curse upon the tablet known as Anzu. Nergal is an Anzu, in Babylonian times, identified by the lamp, the eternal flame, the curse that keeps the fire burning. These columns were probably connected to pillar worship, and therefore with tree worship, the pillar symbolizing the trunk of the world tree. The symbol of the sun god Shamash was a sun disk, from which flowed streams of water. His rays, apparently, were fertilizing tears, like the rays of the Egyptian sun god Ra. Ra, Horus the Egyptian falcon god, was also symbolized by the winged solar disk. It is necessary to accumulate these details regarding other deities and their symbols before dealing with Ashur. The symbols of Ashur must be studied, because they are one of the sources of our knowledge regarding the god's origin and character all of which are in the hymn to the ancient church. The winged disc with horns, enclosing four circles, revolving round a middle circle, and rippling rays fall down from either side of the disc. The second is a circle, or wheel, suspended by wings, and enclosing a warrior, drawing his bow, to dispatch an arrow, and the third, the same circle. The warrior's bow, however, is carried in his left hand, while the right hand is uplifted, as if to bless his worshippers, or curse. In the book of Samuel, and the angel stretched out his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy it, are glorified destruction.
These symbols are taken from seal cylinders, an Assyrian standard, which probably represented the world column, has the disc mounted on a bull's head with horns. The upper part of the disc is occupied by a warrior, whose head, part of his bow, and the point of his arrow protrude from the circle. The rippling water rays are V-shaped, as if protruding from the head of Mushusu, and two bulls treading river-like rays occupy the divisions thus formed. There are also two heads, that of a man and a lion. The lion and man have a gaping mouth, which symbolized the tempest, the destroying power of the sun, or the sources of the Tigris and Euphrates, the underworld river of Pazuzu, leading to the realm of the dead, the realm of Marduk. Now that I've primed you with this information, I reveal that the marital spirit does not end in Assyria. Now it's biblical. As Ashur, aka Marduk, is the original framer of the earth and sky. Their names vary, but their number seven does not. It's worth noting that five foot seven is the usual height of a dictator and the exact height of a particular narrator. I leave you with the hymn to the Framer of the Earth and then with my edited version containing the Sumerian components. Please share, like, comment, and subscribe for more ancient mysteries.